Israel's arid deserts hold the secret to combating changing climates. Israel is one of the only countries where the desert is becoming smaller. So it's the opposite of what we call desertification. And this is because there are more and more areas within the Negev Desert where we see farms. It's not by chance, but by a generations-long program to make southern Israel's Negev Desert bloom with life. That was the dream of Israel's founder, David Ben-Gurion. And at Ben-Gurion University, researchers are working on how. Israel is a leading nation in terms of water reuse uh, for agriculture mostly and desalination. We are improving the processes, we're making them better, uh, cheaper, more efficient, and so on and so forth. Professor Noam Weisbrod focuses on water research at the Blaustein Institutes for Desert Research, where faculty are learning lessons from the desert to serve all of humanity on a changing planet. The Earth is 47% dry land, according to the UN definition. We are dealing with, with uh, topics that are really um, very important for the future of humanity. And uh, especially considering the fact that um, climate instability, which is something that we talk about all the time, is especially emphasized in dryland. The lessons can't be learned in a classroom, though. At the Institute, these scientists are following the Negev's wildlife to see what man's actions are doing to the world around us. Biodiversity crisis is an event that's taking place now all through the planet where we as humans, by different actions, either deliberately or in the consequences of other actions, are decreasing the numbers of plants and animals. Professor Uri Roll is a conservation scientist and he tracks wildlife across the sands. His field of ecological research looks at the native populations over time and whether past changes can predict the future. We're gonna have these extreme events. Extreme events can be fires, can be floods, but can also be just a prolonged period of very, very high temperatures. And what we think is that this can have profound effects on animals and plants. And what we have looked at is in the past, seeing the prevalence or the frequency of such events where animals lived, to project it to the future. It's very hands-on, out in the sand and the scrub in the early morning to count birds. So this group has built their nest inside of a salt bush that's kind of concealed by a mesquite. And we've set out a camera so that I can monitor the nest remotely, which means I don't have to come to the nest every day or two, like a lot of studies, um, to check and see how the nestlings are doing. This bird watching has a purpose. Learn how the local fauna interacts with human settlement and how it's impacting the bird population. So one of the things I'm trying to figure out this year by putting tags on the birds is whether or not they are actually foraging within the settlements and that that is just making the difference. The answers could help us understand better how to interact with our surroundings. As the planet changes around us, perhaps it can also answer what is the best way to preserve what we still have. And if you want more great content like that from I-24 News, just hit the subscribe button. It's as easy as that.